Before we begin, uh, I would like to acknowledge the unceded Wulistukwe, Mi'kmaq, and Passamaquoddy territory we currently stand on. And I wish to thank them for allowing us to gather. To recognize the land is an expression of our gratitude to those whose territory we are on. And we have honoring the indigenous people who have been living and working on the land from time immemorial. It is important to understand the longstanding history that has brought us to reside on the land and to honor the history as we continue to welcome new families to these lands and work together towards reconciliation. Je tiens également à remercier nos bailleurs de fonds et nos organisations partenaires, les personnes qui ont contribué à cela. Le gouvernement du Nouveau-Brunswick, l'Agence de promotion économique du Canada Atlantique, le Conseil d'entreprise du Nouveau-Brunswick, l'Association francophone des municipalités du Nouveau-Brunswick, le Conseil économique du Nouveau-Brunswick, euh, Tech Impact, Dialogue Nouveau-Brunswick, le Réseau en immigration francophone du Nouveau-Brunswick, la coopérative de développement régional, l'Université du Nouveau-Brunswick, l'Université de Moncton, New Brunswick Community College, le Collège communautaire du Nouveau-Brunswick, and for this particular virtual event, we'd like to thank Growing Miramichi and all of the local partners under that umbrella. And finally, before introducing our special speakers this evening, I have an obligation to set some ground rules and mention some housekeeping items to ensure that this is a productive experience for everyone, including the audience. Now, interpretive interpretation is provided and you can choose the language of your choice on the lower right-hand corner. First, a presentation from our resident economists, Richard Sayan and David Campbell, followed by a brief Q&A and two special feature videos, followed by Q&A and discussion time before we close. Monsieur Eric Thibodeau from Population Growth Division is with us today to answer any immigration process specific questions that may come up. We want this event to mean something to you. So please do engage with questions on the chat function within Zoom. As the facilitator, I will be picking a few and asking them during the Q&A period. However, you, are also, you also have a chance to ask your question in person. To ask a question live, please use the, hand, the raise hand function and I will mention your name and tell you when you can ask your question or share a comment. We ask that you keep your microphone on mute unless told to otherwise, to avoid any background noise sound or any, any background noise of sound feedback. We also encourage you to turn on your cameras. It's always better to see faces that leads to a deeper, more meaningful engagement. If we have tech interruption, please stay with us. There is always a risk in doing something like this live, but we will hopefully be avoiding any disruption. And this session will be recorded. And now I would like to introduce our mayor, the mayor of Miramichi, Adam Lorden. Hello, Marcy, Rachel. Hello, everybody. Bonsoir, Gwe. C'est un plaisir d'accueillir tout à cet événement ce soir. It's a, it's a Oh, I'm sorry, my tr translation is uh, turned on and it's throwing me off. I apologize. Sorry, Rachel. All right, I'm back on. Uh, uh, yes, so it's a pleasure to welcome everybody to this event this evening. Uh, and especially to those that are joining us virtually from maybe outside of our community. And I'd also like to take the opportunity um, to acknowledge that we are gathering virtually on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Uh, it's a pleasure to be taking part again here in New Conversations 2.0. And when I was asked to, to reflect on what's happened in our community from the last event to this one, and boy, I can only describe that first event a few years ago as a game changer, an eye opener, a springboard, and a call to action that has transformed our community and led to sustained efforts on immigration and population growth by our city and so many local partners. In short, we heard the message and we got to work. It's hard now to even believe uh, that there was a time when this wasn't a primary focus for so many of us. And I'd like to highlight a few of the successes and milestones that have taken place since that first event. The first is the launch of the Mayor's Welcome Barbecue that, uh, that was inspired at, in the room at that very night down at the Rod. 
Uh, and this barbecue formally welcomes all newcomers to Miramichi, whether they're coming from other parts of New Brunswick, Canada, or around the world. It invites them to experience our community, gives them helpful information and resources uh, as they settle in. It celebrates our growing diversity and thanks people for choosing Miramichi as their home. It's become the largest welcome event in New Brunswick's history, a visible sign of our openness, and has grown every year, even last year when we had to move it online virtually. Since that event, numerous community organizations have also come together to form Growing Miramichi, which has developed in consultation with newcomers and local businesses, a Miramichi Region Population Growth Action Plan. This is a three-year plan that will guide our, all of our efforts on immigration and population by not just the city, but uh, by so many of the stakeholders within our region. And it's one collaborative plan where everybody can work together. I'm proud to say that earlier this year, the city of Miramichi Council uh, officially adopted the regional population growth plan as the city's population growth plan and uh, recently adopted a new economic development and tourism strategic plan with population and immigration and housing as our number one priority for the next five years. Uh, also coming out of the um, New Conversations first event, we've received as a community the Federal Local Immigration Partnership designation. And we've seen the Miramichi Regional Multicultural Association grow their team and their impact dramatically in the community. We've seen record numbers of immigrants arriving in Miramichi over the last several years, helping to fill jobs and sustain and allow local businesses to grow. They've also added diversity and new social and cultural opportunities for all Miramichi years that were never available here before. And because of these record numbers of immigrants, along with Miramichi years, coming back home to Miramichi and an influx of people moving here from around Canada. In 2019, that was the first year in decades that our population did not decline here in our community. We've seen uh, so many other great events coming out uh, and because of this momentum, for example, we've seen vibrant Black History Month celebrations established in Miramichi that also grow every year. The establishment of new community cultural organizations like the Miramichi Afro Connections Organization and the Filipino Miramichi Group. And we've seen community gatherings to celebrate uh, festivals and, uh, and holidays like Diwali and Ramadan that were never actively present in our community before. So many positive developments have come. And when I think back to that night at the Rod a few years ago, it feels now like it was a tipping point in creating awareness and momentum to make all that's happened possible. Tonight, I'm looking forward to the program and we should be viewing New Conversations 2.0 as another milestone in our community, a celebration of all that has been accomplished in the last few years and a kickoff to all of the great work that will be coming in the next few years. We've come a long way and we still have much further to go and much more work to do to get there. So tonight, I'm hoping that this will serve as a motivator and an inspiration for us all. We've got momentum, a plan, and more and more people in organizations working together all the time to continue to build a, vib a vibrant and diverse economy and community that will make life better for all Miramichi years, new and old. We've seen real success in the past few years, and I can't wait to see how much further we're gonna go together in the years ahead. So thank you, Merci Rachel, back to you. Thank you so much, Mira Lord, and thank you for being with us. Now, I would like to introduce one of the lead economists in the province, Mr. David Campbell. David is a former chief economist from New Brunswick, from the New Brunswick Job Board, and founded his own economic development consulting and research firm, Jupia Consultants Incorporated, in 2008. Based in Moncton, he is one of Atlantic Canada's leading economic development consultants. He has worked with more than 80 local, provincial, and national economic development agencies, industries, associations, and government departments in six Canadian provinces and two American states. He holds a certificate in economic development from the University of Waterloo in Ontario and an MBA from Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. Nous avons également avec nous l'économiste et consultant en politique publique, Monsieur Richard Sayan. Richard est basé à Moncton et est un ancien cadre du secteur public avec 20 ans d'expérience dans les milieux gouvernementaux et universitaires. Il a passé près de 15 ans à Ottawa dans divers ministères, y compris le bureau du conseil privé. 
Industrie Canada et Transport Canada. Il a écrit ou réalisé quatre livres, dont Au bord du gouffre, Agir maintenant pour éviter la faillite du Nouveau-Brunswick et Deux pays, le Canada à l'ère du grand déséquilibre démographique. Welcome, David and Richard. The screen is yours. Thank you. Um, je vais, uh, David and I have uh, agreed that we would share this time in a very fair manner. I'll be spending about five minutes with you. And David, he deserves about 15. So, uh, because, you know, he's just so much better. But I will be uh, starting the first five minutes in French. So those who need to avail themselves of the services of interpretation, you can hit the button. Um, Aujourd'hui, ce dont on aimerait vous parler, c'est principalement uh, de la région de, je vais partager mon écran pour commencer, la région de Miramichi en particulier. On a beaucoup parlé dans la première tournée des défis euh, démographiques de la province et de l'importance de l'immigration au sens global. Mais aujourd'hui, on aimerait vous parler un peu davantage de la région de Miramichi, des chiffres qui sont proches, euh, propres à la région de Miramichi en tant que telle, et ensuite euh, essayer de, de rentrer dans des détails de comment est-ce qu'on peut aller de l'avant en tant que région pour encore améliorer euh, la croissance de la population, la croissance démographique à Miramichi et euh, accueillir encore davantage de nouveaux arrivants. Donc, euh, moi, je vais commencer avec un peu un aperçu démographique. Et comme je l'ai dit, ça devrait durer cinq ou six minutes. Puis ensuite, David, je vais passer le relais, il vous parlera davantage de scénarios de croissance démographique, mais il va aussi vous parler de l'importance de l'immigration généralement. Donc, le premier point que j'aimerais faire sur la diapositive que vous voyez là, bien sûr, c'est que euh, le moteur de, de, de la, la croissance démographique récemment, c'est l'immigration. Et l'immigration est en grande partie un phénomène qui résulte euh, du besoin de main d'œuvre qui lui-même est issu du vieillissement de la population. Le Nouveau-Brunswick est encore une province qui est plus âgée et plus vieillissante que le Canada. Vous le voyez sur une diapositive comme ça. Euh, là où vous voyez les, les, le gros de la population sur la pyramide des âges, vous voyez entre les âges de 55 et 74 ans, ça c'est la génération du baby boom. Elle domine toujours la population au Nouveau-Brunswick. Au Canada, ce n'est plus le cas. C'est la génération des milléniaux qui domine euh, la, la structure des âges du Canada. La raison pour laquelle le Canada vieillit moins rapidement, c'est parce que, justement, il a accueilli davantage de nouveaux arrivants au fil du temps, pendant des générations. Donc, nous, notre défi maintenant, c'est d'accueillir davantage euh, de nouveaux arrivants. Le Miramichi, la région de Miramichi, là, je vous présente l'agglomération de, euh, de recensement de Miramichi, par rapport au Nouveau-Brunswick, a vieilli quelque peu plus rapidement que le Nouveau-Brunswick au cours de la dernière décennie. La façon de le voir, c'est si vous regardez euh, un peu à la gauche du graphique, les groupes d'âge un peu plus jeunes, 0-14 ans, 15-24, jusqu'à environ 35-44 ou à peu près, vous voyez la barre rouge, c'est que la région de Miramichi a, déclin, a vu un déclin plus prononcé de sa population que le Nouveau-Brunswick dans l'ensemble. Quand vous examinez les personnes plus âgées, 65, 74, 75 ans et plus, vous voyez qu'il n'y a pas eu une plus forte croissance de personnes âgées euh, dans la région de Miramichi qu'au Nouveau-Brunswick. Et ça, c'est bien clair. Le vieillissement de la population n'est pas causé par le fait qu'on a plus de personnes âgées dans une certaine région. C'est qu'on a moins de jeunes, on perd davantage de jeunes. D'où la raison pour laquelle on a besoin de migration pour rafraîchir nos rangs. Alors, pourquoi est-ce que c'est important d'avoir de l'immigration d'un point de vue euh, économique? Ben, à la gauche de ce graphique-là, vous voyez en rouge, c'est la croissance économique du Canada au cours d'à peu près les dix dernières années ou la dernière décennie. L'économie canadienne a augmenté d'environ 25 alors qu'au Nouveau-Brunswick, c'est environ 6 donc quatre fois plus lentement qu'au Canada. Pourquoi? Principalement, parce que si vous regardez euh, la colonne, la, la droite du graphique maintenant, parce que le Nouveau-Brunswick a perdu des travailleurs, alors que le Canada, lui, a gagné 10 de, de population active, de main d'œuvre au cours de la dernière décennie. Miramichi est un peu une exception, par contre, puis c'est sans doute le reflet du progrès, du progrès récent. La population active de Miramichi a un peu grandi, ce qui veut dire que son économie est sans doute en essor récemment. Ce, ce graphique-ci vous montre l'ampleur du défi auquel fait face Miramichi. En rouge, vous voyez les gens qui atteignent l'âge de 65 ans à chaque année. Et comme vous voyez, euh, l'âge de 65 ans, il faut noter, c'est l'âge officiel de la retraite. Et en gris, vous voyez ceux qui atteignent l'âge de 15 ans, qui est un indicateur de l'âge officiel de travailler. Vous voyez depuis 2011 ou à peu près, la courbe rouge des 65 ans s'est mise à escalader dramatiquement. Ça, c'est parce que le premier baby boomer, les premiers baby boomers ont atteint l'âge de 65 ans. 
Donc maintenant, pour vous donner un aperçu. Charles, de... Sorry to interrupt. I believe you're sharing. Um, right now, we're stuck on the first slide. So I think you might be sharing just like the regular PowerPoint as opposed to the presentation. I'm actually, I apologize. I'm actually sharing the, the, the presentation. Now it has moved. Do you see it? It has changed? Uh, okay. It just changed, yeah. It's still, it's not in present. It, we, we're not seeing the presentation mode though. No, but now you should. Uh, you? Okay. Yeah, now that's, that's better. Okay, I apologize. I was just following the presentation. So I do hope now that you see that graph that I was talking about, this, the, the, the people, les gens âgés de 65 ans. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so as I was saying, the red line can, does, just shows that the, the, the people age 65 and above, donc les gens âgés de 65 ans et plus, uh, sont beaucoup plus nombreux que les gens qui atteignent l'âge de travailler en gris. Donc pour voir l'ampleur du défi à chaque année, il y a environ 200 personnes de plus qui atteignent l'âge de 65 ans, puis il y en a qui atteignent l'âge de 15 ans. Donc, ça vous donne un aperçu de l'ampleur du défi auquel fait face la région de Miramichi. Si on passe à la prochaine diapositive, c'est une diapositive encourageante. L'immigration a des effets bénéfiques, non seulement sur le marché du travail, mais aussi pour notre population d'âge scolaire. Ce que vous voyez là en rouge, c'est sur l'axe de gauche, vous voyez la population d'âge scolaire à Miramichi. Elle a cessé de décliner dans les dernières années et ça, c'est le reflet de l'immigration. Parce que quand les, les, les familles immigrantes nous arrivent, quand les nouveaux arrivants arrivent dans notre communauté, sont typiquement de jeunes adultes en âge d'avoir des enfants. Donc, ils arrivent soit avec des enfants ou vont avoir des enfants. Donc, ils contribuent à faire augmenter la population d'âge scolaire. Et juste pour vous montrer le potentiel de l'immigration pour faire augmenter la, 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 la population d'âge scolaire, donc augmenter la, les, les effectifs des écoles, regardez la ligne grise, ça c'est la, la ligne de Moncton. Et vous voyez qu'elle est en forte croissance, surtout ces dernières années. On est passé de 20, 000, 20 500 environ à presque 24 000 euh, jeunes de 5 à 18 ans. Donc, ça vous montre le potentiel de l'immigration. Je vais terminer avec deux diapositives, par contre, qui vous rappellent l'ampleur du défi auquel on fait face au niveau de l'immigration ou au niveau de l'économie en général. Regardez un graphique comme celui-ci, vous allez voir la ligne rouge, c'est la ligne de secteur privé pour la région Camelton-Miramichi. Les données ne sont pas disponibles pour juste Miramichi. Ce que vous voyez, c'est qu'on a une tendance vers le déclin du nombre de travailleurs dans le secteur privé. C'est un déclin quand même sur 20 ans d'environ 10 000, donc c'est près de 20 même un peu plus de 20 de déclin de nombre de travailleurs du secteur privé. Mais par contre, dans le secteur public, on voit une augmentation nette. Qu'est-ce qui se passe? C'est que la main d'œuvre passe tranquillement du secteur privé au secteur public avec le vieillissement, parce qu'avec le, le vieillissement, il y a plus de demandes pour, le, pour les services de santé les, les, et les services aux personnes âgées. Le défi pour nous, ça va être maintenant de faire croître les deux, non seulement le secteur public, parce qu'on va avoir davantage de besoins, mais aussi le secteur privé, qui est quand même la source des impôts et des recettes fiscales nécessaires pour faire croître euh, le secteur public et soutenir le secteur public. Et pour ma dernière diapositive, juste pour vous montrer l'ampleur du défi dans le secteur public, voici ce qu'on peut considérer comme dépenses supplémentaires auxquelles le Nouveau-Brunswick va faire face dans les années à venir, uniquement causées par le vieillissement. Pas la technologie ou encore l'inflation générale, mais juste le fait que nous, les Nouveaux-Brunswickois gagnent en âge, avancent en âge. Donc, d'ici 2025, on parle de pression supplémentaire d'environ 350 millions de dollars. D'ici 2030, donc d'ici 9 ans, environ 700 millions de dollars. Et d'ici 2035, on, plus d'un milliard de dollars de dépenses supplémentaires. Pourquoi? Parce que les premiers baby boomers atteignent seulement 75 ans cette année. À partir de 75 ans et plus, les dépenses de santé commencent à augmenter de manière exponentielle. D'ici 15 ans, la population de nombre de personnes âgées de 75 ans et plus au Nouveau-Brunswick va passer d'environ 65 000 à plus de 140 000. Donc, ça va faire des pressions énormes sur les dépenses de soins de santé, mais ça va aussi nous demander d'augmenter les effectifs des travailleurs dans les soins de santé. Donc, il va falloir augmenter le nombre de travailleurs de manière globale pour faire face aux défis du vieillissement de manière générale. Donc, ça, c'était un peu pour vous donner un aperçu de comment se, se débrouille la région de Miramichi. Je vais m'arrêter ici et je vais passer maintenant le flambeau à David qui va maintenant vous présenter le, le reste de la présentation. So I'll stop sharing the screen. Sorry about this. It shouldn't be too long. There we are.
Okay, thank you, Richard. So that's a seamless transition. I hope everybody can see my slides now, basically carrying on from where Richard left off. Um, Welcome, I'm really glad to be here. Uh, glad to be back in the Miramichi, at least on a virtual basis. I have had the opportunity to work with Jeff McTavish and the mayor uh, and other stakeholders on the economic strategy, economic development strategy that was just launched uh, in the city a few weeks ago. So I have uh, intimate knowledge of all of the data and all of the statistics and everything that's going on right now in Miramichi, the new population growth plan the housing strategy and other efforts that were mentioned earlier. So there's lots of really good things happening in Miramichi. I'm just going to show you a couple of population scenarios here uh, that project out what could happen. Uh, but before I do that, I did want to I did want to start with the good news that the immigration numbers for the province uh, have been increasing significantly in the last few years. In 2019. Uh, we had about 6,000 permanent residents admitted to New Brunswick around the province. Uh, a lot of those were in the urban centers, but there was over 1,000 or just about 1,100 uh, that were in outside of the urban centers as well. So we're getting both uh, urban and rural immigration to the province, and that's good news. We need to see these numbers increase in the coming years. So the, uh, Richard touched on population growth and uh, student population, K to 12 education. So I won't get into this in great detail. And I will say that you can download these PowerPoint presentations in French or English uh, from the Multicultural Council website. Uh, and you can also download a population planning document that we developed specifically for Miramichi. Uh, so you can do those. So you don't have to take notes because you can actually download all this information I would say that uh, last year I did look at the role of immigration to help rebuild the K-12 to student population uh, in New Brunswick. I did this work for the Multicultural Council, and this chart is showing you what could happen if we see a steady increase in the immigrant population in New Brunswick uh, over the next decade. The reality is a lot of newcomers settling in the province are coming with children already. We have a higher share of young families uh, settling here than in say Ontario. And what that means is that the young people that are coming with those families are actually going into the school system right away. And so you can see here based on the projections that we did that the student population of those born in Canada is actually projected to decline fairly significantly over the next decade from about 90,500 in 1920 uh, 2019, 2020, down to about 83,900 by 2029, 20, 2030. But you can see that if we get the uh, immigrant numbers that we're expecting over the next decade, that those numbers uh, will be more than offset by the increase uh, in uh, K to 12 uh, uh, students coming from the immigrant population. So not only are we supporting our workforce by attracting newcomers, but we're also rebuilding the talent pipeline by seeing an increase in student population. So now let me just take the next few minutes to go through these population growth projections. And again, as I mentioned earlier, Miramichi already has a population growth uh, strategy and targets. So that's really, really good news. So consider this sort of a, a supplement to the work that's already being done. So why is it important to, to grow the population of the region? Well, we have many strategically important industries in Miramichi. We have new growth opportunities in tourism and manufacturing and agriculture. And there's about a thousand employers in the Miramichi region. So there's lots of employers and there is a risk that many could leave if we can't meet workforce demand in the years to come. So the three scenarios that we looked at in the report and I do encourage you to download that report is, one is what could happen if we look at the, the current population trajectory? As the mayor mentioned earlier, we did see a slight increase in the last year, but this is if we look at sort of the long term trend, uh, what could that do to the population over the next uh, 20 years? The second scenario is population growth that we will need in Miramichi to maintain the current size of the workforce. And the third scenario is population growth needed if we actually want to expand the workforce every year at an average annual rate of 0.5%. So why do we want to do these? Well, the, the first scenario is to show what would happen if the workforce, what happens to the workforce if the population does not grow. The second scenario shows what level of population uh, growth will be needed if we want to just keep the current workforce size. 
Uh, and the third scenario shows what level of population growth is needed if we want to actually increase the workforce uh, over the next 20 uh, years. Now, I will say that this is, again, these are just scenarios. Um, and I'll start by saying right out of the gate that was when I did this, it was based on the 2019 workforce numbers. And in fact, in 2020, the workforce in Miramichi actually grew. Uh, so, so we've already right out of the gate, these numbers would have to change a bit, but they would all just sort of uh, increase proportionately. So on the current trajectory, if we look out 20 years, based on this forecast, the population is going to decline only by about 4% across the Miramichi region. But the workforce is going to decline by about 20%. And that's basically because of what Richard talked earlier about demographics. We have more people retiring than we have new people coming into the workforce. And so what that means is even though population is only going to, going, only going to decline slightly, workforce will decline 20%. And in that scenario, we potentially could lose a lot of our export industries. And as Richard said, we'll see more of the workforce shifting toward uh, public services and other local services, again, putting more pressure on our export industries. Under the second scenario, the population uh, would have to increase by about 15%. Uh, to keep the workforce at the level of 13,200. And as I said, we're looking at a workforce now of over 14,000 uh, based on the growth rate there we saw in 2020. But the last time the region grew this fast was in the 1960s. So we will have to see fairly significant population growth over the next 20 years if we want to keep the same size workforce. But even at the current workforce level, again, more of that workforce will be shifting into local services, public and private putting pressure uh, on our export-oriented industries and making it difficult to grow new industries like agriculture, tourism, and natural resources. So the third scenario was actually if we wanted to grow the workforce at a modest 0.5% per year, and that would require a, a fairly or a significant growth rate over the 20-year period of about adding about 8,000 people to the Miramichi uh, Census Agglomeration Area or a 20% increase in population, it would lead to an increase in the workforce uh, and it would provide workforce to support growth in new industries. But it, like I said, because of the demographic situation right now, you would need to see significant new young people uh, added to the population and added to the workforce to offset those that are uh, going to be retiring and leaving the workforce over the next 20 years. So the bottom line is we are seeing an increase in immigration. I think the numbers in 2019, 2020 were about 90, 90 uh, immigrants added to the population. Um, uh, the average annual over the last three years is about 75. We're gonna have to get up to around 300 or more uh, per year uh, if we want to grow the population. So the good news is we are seeing uh, nice uh, uh, increases in the last few years, but we'll probably need to triple or more uh, the rate of immigration in the future uh, if we want to grow uh, the population and workforce in the years ahead. So how do we do that? Well, the bottom line is we need more local support and local engagement, and we're certainly seeing that in spades right now in the Miramichi. It's not just a provincial government issue. It's very much about leadership at the local level, and we are seeing that in, the, in, the, in government and in industry and community across the Miramichi region. And the reality is, uh, you know, and there's more about this in the report if you download it, but basically we're asking a lot of local government. If you go back 20 years or so, you know, there was uh, the things that we were asking from local government were pretty standard. Now we're asking them to worry about population growth and promoting their communities uh, and, and doing a whole lot more on the quality of life and green spaces because we have to be more competitive now for population growth and for attracting population. So we're leaning a lot more heavily on our local and regional governments uh, around the province. So the other thing I'd just like to say in closing here is that, is that it's more than just about population growth because in order to grow the population, now you need to look at more housing because people are retiring, they're not leaving Miramichi. So we actually need more, uh, more housing. And again, there is a housing uh, plan or strategy developed in the Miramichi region, which is great. Uh, but we also need to look at industries that have potential to grow in the region. So we like to think of this more as a business plan or a broader plan of action uh, to, to support the growth of the region uh, in the years ahead. 
So with that, uh, I think we're gonna open it up to the panel, but before we do that, I will say that uh, you can, again, download these uh, documents, this, this PowerPoint presentation, but also a population planning document that we developed with more details around the population growth scenarios. You can download those uh, at the Multicultural Council website. Uh, they've actually set up a specific website specifically to New Conversations 2.0. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and uh, we can move to the next segment of the of the event. Well, thank you very much, Richard and David. So we're opening this up now to questions. If anybody have questions, again, um, you can raise that little hand um, to ask your questions or if you have a comment or in the chat portion of the Zoom. Um, I will start with one question here that I have. Um, it's what industries do you think could be at risk of leaving if there were no, not enough workers? Go ahead, David. So I just had the opportunity to, to do a really deep dive on the economy in the Miramichi region. And I think there is, you know, there is a risk that some of our export oriented industries could leave the region. So that's manufacturing, potentially transportation, uh, there's a potential risk that we won't be able to grow the tourism sector. There could be agricultural opportunities. There could be even mining opportunities in the wider Miramichi region that all will require uh, workforce. And as Richard has said, that there, there will be demand for more workers in the public sector, particularly healthcare, but also in the private sector, but serving local markets. So we're really talking about supporting uh, the export oriented sector of, of the Miramichi region. So I think there's you know, we don't want to talk about worst case scenarios, but if we can't, you know, obviously if the workforce continues to decrease or decreases, uh, it will put pressure on those industries. Thank you. Um, I have another question here. Uh, it seems like we will need to attract a lot of population based on your forecast. How realistic is this really? Well, I, I may start um, on this one. The issue there is to show the magnitude of the challenge facing a place like Miramichi, I can tell you that there are places that are facing even greater challenges than that, but we don't wanna be alarming by any stretch of the imagination, but it's if we have to reach towards a higher target, we need to know what that baseline is. And that was the exercise today. My feeling is that much of it is actually doable, but it won't happen alone, which is why I think that a region like yours who really is getting ahead of the game is in a good position to probably get you know, even more traction on a file like this one. And I think that the level of success that you will encounter in your community will depend on the level of deliberate efforts that you will make because the uh, aging of the population is unavoidable and opens up opportunities, but people will decide in which communities they want to go. So I think that the, the, everything that you've started in Miami Shi so far is a great start and, and it positions you very well for achieving uh, or at least you know, reaching realistically towards uh, the targets that were laid out tonight. Well, there's a lot of work that has been done in the background for the last three years. So um, uh, we, you may not see it right away, but um, it, it is happening. Um, so I have another question. I apologize, that... I think we are actually seeing it in the data. You, well, there you go. Well, me on the day-to-day -day person, I, you you see it on paper, but maybe on, on a day-to-day -day basis, some people might not see it right away. But um, I do have another question. Uh, what is wrong with population decline? Won't the economy just adjust to the new reality? I'll let Richard handle that since he's written about six books on the subject, so. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, we had an event in Bathurst on this very topic today, and uh, I went, I, came, I got not emotional, but I went into a, a long, not a long, but probably lengthier discussion than we'll have here. I'm going to be disciplined. But fundamentally, we're going to become a society that is essentially becoming a society of rentiers, a society who depends on old age security, guaranteed income supplement, our CPP, uh, money that comes from elsewhere, and we're going to become more vulnerable, more resilient, uh, less resilient, and more dependent on what I call the generosity of others. And we will not be a dynamic society that is open, diverse, and really making its way uh, in, in the new world in the, 20, in the 21st century. So uh, it's, it's absolutely critical that we make the, the virage, as we say in French. And 
Honestly, uh, I'm so encouraged by the results that we've achieved today. In three years, the, 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 all the data shows that this is really taking off. And, and that's why uh, I think that, again, I'd rather not contemplate what would happen if we did not have growth, because we're going to have that growth. Great, thank you. You were disciplined on that on that answer. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> want to get too emotional. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. Um, and another question: um, Do you have examples of immigrants settling long term in smaller rural areas such as Carleton County? Um. So we, we did see Carleton County actually with a pretty good migration rate. So I think it's actually a good uh, example for Miramichi. They're running at a, an immigration rate of about 70, it's around 70 per 10,000 population. Uh, Miramichi is running at about 30, 35 per, per 10,000. So really we need to get up here in the Miramichi, we need to get up to a little over 100 per 10,000 per year. Uh, which is about a 1%, a little over 1.1% uh, inward migration from immigration. So I think there are examples. Again, Carleton County has had a good rate. Uh, if you look elsewhere in Canada, places like Saskatchewan and, and Manitoba, some of the smaller cities, uh, Brandon, Manitoba, for example, have attracted uh, a fairly significant share of immigration. It, you know, smaller areas have challenges that, uh, that uh, compared to larger urban centers. But on the other hand, they have, they're more intimate. And I think as, as, as others have said uh, throughout this tour, you can get to know your neighbors. So there's, there's, there's real advantages to these smaller urban centers like Miramichi uh, for the folks that you know, can see themselves living in smaller communities. So we, we need to attract people, uh, provide good economic opportunity, but also uh, embrace them as they settle in our community. And of course, with the mayors, uh, uh, barbecues and all of the things that are happening in Miramichi, we're seeing that that ability and that effort uh, to be open and supportive of uh, immigrants that move into the community. So there are examples. We need to apply those learnings here in Miramichi. But like Richard, I think we've seen good movement in the last few years, and I think that the trends are are, are positive. Great. Um, I do have another question here. Uh, how has the pandemic and resetting of global industries and trends impact immigration to a place like Miramichi? David, you're more familiar with the data, so I'll let you try to take a crack at it. Yeah, I think the, the fear here is that we get sort of paralyzed by some of these things, right? That we worry about technological change or the lingering effects of COVID-19. And I would just encourage local stakeholders to keep your eye on the ball. We need to grow the population. Yes, we have to be strategic about it and be, and be looking to align the folks coming into job opportunities. We should be bringing more uh, international students through the community college and those numbers uh, have ticked up in recent years. So I think we just need to keep our eye on the ball here and get focused because I think if we get too worried or too paralyzed by these other trends like technological change or the lingering effects of COVID-19, we could lose momentum. So let's, let's understand that there are things happening out there. The tourism industry will be impacted probably for, for, for a number of years, potentially. Uh, we are seeing technological change in other industries. We are seeing some softening of our export-based service industries like back offices. But I still think for the leadership in the community, let's keep our eye on the ball. And that is, we need to grow this population. You know, we need to, to offset some of our aging population with new younger population. Uh, we need to reset our, our school system by bringing in young families that have young children that, that go to K to 12. And that's the strategic focus moving forward. And yes, we, you know, we do have to keep our eye on these trends, but let's not uh, drop, uh, the real focus, which is growing the population in the years ahead. Well, thank you so much. Um, it's already that time where we have to move on to the next segment. I want to thank both uh, David and Rishal for being with, uh, with us this evening. Um, so now we turn to um, a, a different kind of aspect. Uh, we will be uh, hearing uh, about newcomers. So I'll be introducing four newcomers and then we are going to go to a video uh, and they will be speaking and then we'll have a question and answer period. Um, our first uh, newcomer is Calicia Rumble-McCalla. 
She is the Rural Settlement Network Coordinator, as well as a Youth and Family Services Officer at the Miramichi Regional Multicultural Association. Originally from Jamaica, Kalicia has lived in Miramichi since arriving in 2014 and has been involved in many significant newcomer initiatives in our region. In 2019, Kalicia attracted media attention throughout Atlantic Canada when she led the way in finding housing for an influx of international students to the NBCC Miramichi. Our next newcomer is, uh, was born in Israel, Dr. Nir Shoham Hazan, MD completed a, an ophthalmology residency in his home country in January of 2010. Dr. Shoham Hazan went on to pursue a lucrative fellowship at the University of Toronto, during which time he received funding for numerous research grants, as well as awards for presentation um, in various international conferences. Dr. Shoham Mazan moved to Miramichi in 2017. He has a clinic in Miramichi and is currently constructing a new ophthalmology clinic along Water Street in the historic downtown Chatham Business District. Dr. Shoham Mazan is also an assistant professor at the Miramichi campus of the Dalhousie University and Memorial University Faculties of Medication, of Medication, of Medicine, excuse me. Um, he is the husband and a father of two wonderful young boys. Um, our next newcomer is Kenza Benuna. Kenza Benuna est diplômée du CCNB, née et élevée à Marrakech, au Maroc. Ses parents voulaient au départ qu'elle étudie en France parce que c'était près de l'endroit où elle a grandi. Cependant, elle a postulé pour étudier au Canada sans même savoir où c'était. Kenza est directeur des communications pour l'Association des étudiants internationaux du Nouveau-Brunswick et a récemment déménagé à Miramichi afin de commencer un emploi dans une banque locale. Kenza apprend tout juste à connaître la région de Miramichi et elle donne sa, sa perspective d'une arrivée très récente dans la communauté. And finally, Simran Randawa. She is an international student at the Miramichi campus of New Brunswick Community College and is recognized as being a leader among her peers. Arriving from India in 2019, at the, at the same time as many newcomers, Simran brings firsthand knowledge of what it is to be a young newcomer living in the Miramichi region. Enjoy the video. Uh, my name is Kalisa Rumbamakala, and I came here to the Miramichi in 2014 from Jamaica. Um, I came here as a student my, with my husband. Um, uh, we fell in love with the Miramichi um, when we came here. A lot of people, you know, ask us questions like, why did you come to the Miramichi? But uh, we realized that the people were very loving and caring, and um, they really helped us to settle in the area. And so we, we, we thought it was a place for us to, you know, um, stick around and, 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 and help out um, other individuals that are coming. Uh, presently, I work with the Multicultural Association here in the Miramichi. I'm the Youth and Family Services Officer, but I'm also the RSN or Regional Settlement Network Coordinator, where I help newcomers um, to basically settle in the area. So uh, moving um, from a tropical country to the Miramichi, uh, but first and foremost, I must say, um, before I came to the Miramichi, I was living um, for a while there in New York before I came here. So I, I, was, um, I, I, was, I used to be in um, or feeling the snow and, 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 and the winter. However, it was much different when I came here because as you would know, Canadian weather is way different from the weather in the U.S. And so I, I can remember when, um, like my winter clothing that I had um, in New York at the time, when I took it here, they were actually fall clothing here. <laughs> so that was something to get used to. But I, I, I do realize that after a while, I started to get climatized, as, as, as we would say. So that turned out not to be an issue for me and my um, husband at all. And after we came, we we did reach out to like other family members and friends who we went to, for example, university with, and um, they wanted a, a, a different, uh, some adventure too in their life. And so um, a number of them did move to Canada, some not necessarily to the Miramichi, but 
um, quite a number of them did move here um, with us and they are still living in the Miramichi. I must say, when I moved to the Miramichi, it was about uh, probably about three or four of us that lived here as people of color. And so that was something to get used to in the sense that walking around and not seeing somebody looking like me, which was something that I was used to. And so, but as the years went by, that started to change. Now I would say Miramichi is what I would consider as a multicultural environment because now we have people here from all walks of life who have chose Miramichi to become uh, uh, um, their place of choice. And I would definitely encourage anybody else to move here. So one of the things that I think um, um, I would like to see improve in the Miramichi is um, young people getting a lot more involved. Yes, there are programs there that are for young people, but at the same time, I think that um, a better space or, 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 or a safer environment needs to be there where youths can share um, their concerns so that we can stem out the whole migration of youths out of the area. And so I think having um, uh, those who are, let's say, for example, responsible for the building up of the community to have conversations or more conversations with young people so that we can all come together and figure out how we can um, keep our youths and also attract more youths to the area. So um, even though we know that the school is always um, open to, um, you know, getting change and, 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 and helping out with multiculturalism, but I feel like one of the things that need, you know, should probably be looked into is um, looking at having cultural competency in schools where um, whether it's teachers um, being taught um, cultural competency, but also kids in a way where kids can understand. Because as we know, if we are looking to become a, 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 a culturally aware uh, um, environment, because obviously we're taking a lot of newcomers um, in, in and around New Brunswick, I feel like in order to stem out um, uh, racism and, 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 those, and, and those different thoughts um, out of our young people who are coming up, I think that is where we need to start by teaching them uh, 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 to understand that different, being different is something good. It's not bad. And, 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 and we should celebrate that. And I think that's where we, we, we need to start by teaching that to our kids. Hello, everyone, and thank you for this opportunity to take part in this new Conversation Tour 2.0. My name is Nir Shoam Hazen. My family and I moved to Miramichi in the summer of 2017. I'm an eye specialist that had my heart set on practicing in an underserviced community. Dr. Vijay Sharma, who was a good acquaintance of mine at the time, saw the opportunity to recruit me to the river. Since then, my kids and husband fell in love with the people of the river, as well as the various activities this lovely place has to offer. We've decided to call this place home and are building a new ophthalmology center in the business district of downtown Chatham. The new center will house three eye surgeons, Dr. Sharma, Dr. Lichtinger, and myself. I would like to wish our community to stay safe, healthy, and prosperous, and for the future immigrants to the Miramichi to flourish and love it like we do. Thank you. So I think our community is very welcoming and the Miramichi loves um, its immigrants and its new cultures. Um, our community uh, has to think in a big mind and big town uh, sort of way. And I think COVID was a good opportunity to look at that where our vaccines came initially from our community or from the Miramichi. So I think from small town, we can definitely become the center of the province and, and think in, in the big picture. So a lot of people are asking me, how come I moved from a big town into a smaller town? And I tell them uh, Miramichi has a lot to offer. The Maritimes is very famous for the loving people and culture, but there's a lot of good uh, activities for families, including the safety that these, um, these provinces and this Miramichi, the town of Miramichi, offers. Uh, I am typically active in recruiting new physicians and families to the Miramichi, 
And I just say that this is a wonderful, safe place to raise a family and the people are extremely warm and it is um, a very prosperous and uh, just looking into the future, I see a very big promise um, in our region. Je m'appelle Kenza, je, je suis d'origine marocaine. Ça fait trois ans que je suis au Canada, j'avais passé une année au Québec, puis j'ai déménagé au Nouveau-Brunswick. J'ai passé deux ans à Moncton, puis j'étais étudiante, puis je viens d'être transférée à Miramichi. Euh, à cause du travail, j'ai eu un transfert ici, puis ça fait trois mois que je suis à Miramichi. Salam, je suis Kenza, je suis en train de au Canada. Je suis en train de me faire au Québec, je suis en train de me faire au Nouveau-Brunswick. Je suis en train de me faire so my name is Kenza. I'm originally from Morocco. I've been in Canada for three years now. I moved to Quebec when I finished my high school in Morocco. I stayed there for a year. Then I decided to move to New Brunswick, where I stayed two years. I did my studies in CCNB in finance. Then I got transferred to Miramichi because of work. Well, honestly, I have saw a program in in the internet. I saw the, the finance program in the internet. It was kind of interesting. I wanted to do that. So I just jumped. I, mean, I was in the nowhere. So, you know, might as well try something new. I didn't regret my decision at all. Like I, I've i seen the big, big difference between the two provinces, the big province, the big city. I was in Sherbrooke. I've, I've, I've spent a lot of days in Montreal. I've seen the difference between there and here, and we're pretty lucky to be here. Um, also, what really helped me here is uh, people's kindness. They're really nice, and I've met really good people in Quebec as well, but people here are really special. Most of them, like, really, I have all good stories with everyone I met, and... That's what made me who I am right now is because of all of those people who will always have, you know, something in them will always be in me somehow. Uh, they impacted my life, they impacted my decision, they impacted who I am today. Um, I've done a lot of volunteer work as well in Moncton and that helps a lot. It really does to build your network and just to get to know people and to find a reason why you're here on earth somehow, yeah. Well, I've been in Miramichi for three months now. Uh, the big difference between Moncton and here. Moncton is bigger. <laughs> yeah, that's the detail. Moncton is bigger. Uh, people are nice in both places. I, I won't complain. Um, I don't see much difference till now. I've only been here for three months and COVID doesn't help because I can't do much activities like I used to do in Moncton. In Moncton I was a student so that's again a big difference. I had much more free time so I had much more time to enjoy myself, to discover the city, to meet new people, to join any club or anything really. Which is not the case here in Ramishi because I'm working full time and COVID is here so there's not much going on. So... Yeah, I mean, I still need some time to discover the big differences between the two cities. Well, I would say getting people to be more open. And uh, I'm doing customer service, so I'm in contact with people every single day. And obviously they will see that I'm not from here. And my color is different and my I have an accent. And I have, a, you know, I have a story and I have more stuff with me. So some people will be curious and I love that. So people will ask me, where are you from? How are they going to be? Are you from Miramichi? Are you from Moncton? You know, they're going to ask those questions. I'm like, you know, here I'm from, where I'm from and that's my story. And people will go, oh my gosh, it's exciting. And some will be like, who are you? You know, I can't understand you. I don't critic anyone, you know, I'm just, I'm just joking. But yeah, some people will be more open than others. We have, I feel like I like I'm not sure. I've been here for three months, so I can't judge. I know there is much more diversity in Moncton. I guess people are more used to it. Um, in Ramish, I mean, people are getting to know that other people exist. You know, like we have uh, there's other 
countries and people are discovering new countries like i have people asking me so where's morocco so okay it's in the north of africa oh okay you know what's your language do you speak moroccan now i speak arabic <laughs> you know it's kind of fun when you have these questions because you we kind of have the discussion with people and at the end of the day they realize that we have a lot of stuff in common so yeah So my name is Simran and I came here in 2019, September, and I'm a student at New Brunswick Community College pursuing my second year of um, criminal justice correction and I just love it. It's, it's a lovely place to live here. In Miramichi it's quiet and especially the people of Miramichi, they are always helping. You'll never find yourself alone or helpless if you don't know any of your family member if you come here as an international student. So it's it's a great place and the people are very nice. Yes, I think the the only main difference is that I can see my family. If it, it won't be a pandemic, I might have gone back home and seen them. But um, for me, it, it wasn't that hard in terms of my emotions or all that stuff but yeah in the terms of work and college it was very hard to you know it was all online and I'm not, I'm never used to the online studies because in India we are used to read the books and you know go on in the college and make notes and all that stuff so yes it was hard for me in the pandemic to study especially. The difference is that I am on by myself all and I wasn't never by myself I was always dependent on my dad that is the biggest thing that I learned the responsibilities being alone. I learned how to work, how to cooperate with the new people, how to learn about them. And I was very conservative and, you know, introvert person back home. I didn't talk to people much. But when I came here, I realized that, you know, when you talk to a new person, to different people, to, you know, the Canadian people or any country they, where you go, uh, you you get to learn something new that is very very beneficial if you are planning your future in a new country or at a new place. I will say them that they, they won't regret coming here. It's a lovely place to be here. Um, it has everything, and I think there's nothing different than any other province. Miramichi has everything. People are good here. Education, and we get work easily. That's no problem of, for the immigrants, especially what is the main problem when they come here? They always think that, well, we get to work there so, so that, you know, we can handle our expenses and all that stuff. How is the education there? So in terms of education, it's, it's beautiful. Work you can get easily. People are very nice. Accommodations are available. So any international can easily survive here without any problem. In terms of getting better, I think, Overall, it's it's very beautiful, but we if, if the Miramichi can have the more economy, I think it will attract the people from outside. So more people will try to come here and try to work or, you know, study or anything. So Miramichi will get more internationals from any part of the world. So it will increase its um, adaptivity, I think so. So I can name it, but yeah. So it, it'll make it more better. Like for in, in now, we don't have uh, much internationals here. They are just coming for their own work and stuff. But if it will have more economy, people will come here at, at first because they will have, they'll know that there is too much to do uh, as compared to the other provinces or similar to them. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, I already knew two of the four newcomers. Um, you say you have learned a lot from moving here. We are also learning a lot from uh, having you here. And as, as part of the Growing Machine Steering Committee, um, I'm, I'm really pleased to see, to see you here and, and with us right now. Actually, I do have a few questions for you. We did open up for, um, for questions and uh, comments. Um, the questions are in French, but since you have the the interpretation, uh, interpretation uh, or translation there, you can uh, switch it. So, uh, comment, comment aimeriez-vous voir votre communauté grandir dans les prochaines années? Or, or I can say it in English, how would you like to see your community grow in the coming years? It's open to all four of you. 
Kenza, je te vois penser. Can... Peut-être que tu peux répondre. <rire> uh, <laughs> no, I can start how I want my community to grow. The most important thing is to have an open community. Like someone who is okay, you know, to open their house to you, to open their heart to you, to say, you know what, I do have a story and I want to share it with you and I want to know your story as well. That's the kind of community I want to, to live in. That is the most important thing. And that's the only way we can really grow because at the end of the at the end of the day, we are all different. That's a fact. But we do have a lot of synergies. And if we get that chance to talk about, about who we are, you know, we'll we'll build something special. Merci, Kenza. Uh, would anybody like to answer that question also? And I have to say, it's, it's the same thing for us. Uh, to hear your stories uh, makes us grow more. So thank you for sharing. Would anybody else like to add to that question? Well, I think uh, we've all, we are already moving in the right direction. Um, it's just a, a matter of keeping on that path um, where we can continue to grow an environment where uh, multiculturalism and, 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 and people who are already from the Miramichi, we can live as one. And I feel like if we continue on that path, we will definitely achieve the things that we want to achieve. I think each and every one of us, whether we're foreign or local or have become local over the years, I think we're the be best ambassadors to the Miramichi. And I'm kind of happy to say that I've managed to recruit to um, families uh, with kids to, to the Miramichi, small kids. So um, I think we're our best ambassadors. And if we kind of say, you know, we're happy living here and we show everyone the, the best things about, about the river, then we'll, we'll for sure manage to, to increase our, our population and our, our diversity. So thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Simran, would you like to add to that? Hi, and like um, Kenza said, the acceptance is the key. So if people will accept the people from the other communities, so they, they will feel more comfortable to come to Miramichi and live here and settle here. And as Kalisha mentioned that we are already moving in the right direction. And yes, that's right. We are seeing more immigrants coming to New Brunswick and especially Miramichi and they must, they must have seen something good. So that's why they are coming here. And I hope this goes right. Yeah. I do know that one of the questions that uh, a lot of newcomers are being asked and um, they, they always say, don't, don't ask that question. Why did you move to Miramichi? And for me, when I ask this question, it's because I want to know if somebody likes it the same way I like it. But a lot of people ask the question maybe more in a negative, negative way. When I ask the question, it's always in a positive way, meaning, do you see what I see when, when you're in Miramichi? Uh, because I'm not originally from this area. I am from New Brunswick, but I'm not from the Miramichi area. So I'm going to ask you the same question. Um, what did you see in Miramichi? And I mean, some of you, came here just by by a whim or, or school or whatever, but uh, what is it that you like about Miramichi that you can tell people when they do ask you that question? Uh, again, it's opened up to anyone that wants to answer. When I got the news um, that I'm gonna be transferred here, like my first question to my manager was, where is Miramichi and how far is it from Moncton? Like that's how bad it was because I didn't know where Miramichi was located. Uh, my friends were like, why are you going there? Can you just accept a position here and stay like everyone else? It's like, oh no, let's, let's try something else. If it wasn't for work, that's for sure. Well, I'm glad that I got transferred. I'm really glad because here I can see all, I found a beautiful stuff in Moncton, don't get me wrong, but here is completely different. Uh, here you start from scratch. And you can see how people are open. You know, when someone com um, comes to talk to you, they're not coming in purpose. Well, they're coming to know you. And that's completely different. They're not here because they do need something from you. No, they don't care about that. They're here because of you. They want you. They want to know you. They want to know where you're from. They want to know more about you. And that's what makes the, the big difference. Anybody else want to add to that? 
I think uh-huh. for my my husband and I, we we like the the small town vibe. I mean, before before we came here, like we have family um, in different parts of um, Canada, and we also had families that lived in Saint John. And for some reason, we end up in the Miramichi. And and at to be honest, at first we said, ah, oh, we'll probably move after a while. But it's been almost seven years, and we have recruited over probably about seven or eight different uh, families from Jamaica who we went to school with who are still living in the Miramichi after probably two or three or five years. So, and I mean, uh, we've talked about how the people are very good and whatnot, but it is true. I mean, not to bash like Mountain and those other places, but I find that like Kenza said, people here are interested in who you are. I mean, if you go to the bigger cities, you're just almost like another fly on the wall. <laughs> but here, people are genuinely uh, interested to know who you are and, and to see what you have to offer. And I guess that is what uh, um, we loved about the Miramichi, and that's why we're still here after seven years. We appreciate it. <laughs> I'll add something to Coalicia. Just, uh, I've been in Quebec before, I've been in Moncton, I've been in those big cities, and I know people are busy. People are busy everywhere, don't get me wrong. But in those big cities, people are busy and they don't really have time to, you know, to talk to, with you and to know who you are. And that's the difference between Miramichi. Miramichi, the people will take the time, you know, they're gonna create, they're busy, and but they're gonna create a time to talk to you and discover who you are. Thank you so much. Um... This, this uh, concludes this part of um, our feature with newcomers. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here and participating and sharing with us. It's really important for us to hear your stories and, um, and we're really happy that you're here. Uh, now we move on to the second part of uh, our evening. Um, je vais commencer avec, un, avec une présentation de Alain Lamar. Alain Lamar est né à Matane, au Québec. Après avoir complété ses études universitaires à l'administration des affaires à l'École des hautes études commerciales de Montréal, il a travaillé en développement économique au Québec avant de débuter sa carrière dans le mouvement coopératif du au Nouveau-Brunswick. Il est membre de la Chambre de commerce du Grand Rogersville depuis 2015, 2005 et a occupé à deux reprises le poste de président de la Chambre. Alain croit que la Chambre de commerce et ses divers partenaires sont idéalement situés pour pouvoir contribuer au développement socio-économique de la région de Rogersville par la coopération entre les établissements d'enseignement, les organismes communautaires et les gens d'affaires et la, municip la municipalité elle-même. Le développement futur de cette région passera par la capitalisation de son potentiel touristique et culturel ainsi que la mise en œuvre d'initiatives inclusive et fédératrice pour les jeunes et les nouveaux arrivants. Notre prochaine invitée, c'est Roberta McIntyre, and she is from the community of Bay St. Anne, New Brunswick. She graduated with a Bachelor of Social Work from the Université de Moncton, and over the last 33 years, has worked in the positions at the Department of Social Development, Department of Education and Early Childhood Development, the Department of Education and Early Childhood Development since 2014, she has been regional direct, she is the regional director for working in the Miramichi, which is a branch of the Department of the Post-Secondary Education, Training and Labor. In her present role, Roberta provides strategic, customized and measurable supports to individual job seekers, employers and partners and partner organization. Roberta believes that empowering businesses and individuals to move forward will ensure that our labor market and its participants are able to operate at peak potential. Originaire du Burundi, Jenny Mouimpundu est arrivée au Québec en 2013, avant de déménager à Miramichi en 2015. Jenny est présidente de Miramichi Afro Connection, qui compte maintenant plus de 50 membres. Le MAC aide à accueillir les nouveaux arrivants dans la région de Miramichi, et aide à leur intégration dans la communauté. L'objectif de MAC est de soutenir la croissance de la communauté noire de Miramichi alors que la région voit de plus en plus de Noirs appeler Miramichi chez eux. Jenny joue un rôle instrumental à chaque année dans les événements du mois de l'histoire des Noirs de Miramichi et elle joue un rôle clé dans l'organisation d'une série de dialogues publics sur le racisme au cours de l'été 2020. 
Jeff McTavish is currently the Director of Economic Development and Tourism for the City of Miramichi. Among other things, he is responsible for tourism promotion, production development, business attraction and retention, and special community development projects. He has been a board member of the Downtown Miramichi, Ch Miramichi Chamber of Commerce, CBDC Northumberland Incorporated, Miramichi Public Transit Commission, and the Station Wharf Marina. He is currently involved as a member of Growing Miramichi, as well as being part of a stakeholder committee on affordable housing. Please enjoy the video. Bonjour, mon nom c'est Alain Lamar. Je travaille à Rogersville au niveau de Unique Opération Financière et puis euh, mon emploi est conseiller en services personnels. Pourquoi venir s'installer à Rogersville? La région de, de Rogersville est une petite communauté d'un peu plus de 3000 habitants située à 30 minutes au sud de la Miramichi. Moi et ma famille, nous sommes venus s'installer à Rogersville il y a environ 21 ans. Ce qui nous a attiré beaucoup euh, à Rogersville en premier, c'est l'accueil des gens. Dès notre arrivée, on s'est senti faire partie déjà de la communauté. C'est une belle communauté avec différentes générations et très inclusive. Il y a un esprit d'entraide communautaire très enraciné parmi la population. Dès que les personnes sont en difficulté, les gens euh, viennent en aide et ils sont, ils sont extrêmement généreux. Je peux vous raconter par exemple que suite à un incendie qui avait eu le, la caserne des pompiers et euh, l'édifice médiéval il y a environ une dizaine d'années, euh, les gens se sont pris en main rapidement, ils ont ramassé des fonds, puis peu de temps après, l'édifice a été reconstruit. Donc, il y a vraiment un dynamisme exemplaire qui est reconnu à Rogersville euh, parmi toute la province. Ce qui attire les gens un peu dans la région de Rogersville, c'est beaucoup la nature, la forêt. Il y a des nombreux sentiers de VTT et de skidoo, de motoneige. Euh, la région est reconnue pour l'exploitation de ses ressources naturelles. Il y a l'agriculture, la civiculture, la culture des, des petits fruits, ainsi que l'exploitation forestière. La région compte également euh, des, euh, des services municipaux, un, une garderie, un foyer de soins, une école de la maternelle à de la douzième année, un, un, un cafétérium qui va être construit bientôt également. Aussi, la région de Rogersville est, est bien diversifiée. Il y a plusieurs commerces dans différents secteurs. Il y a des emplois quand même intéressants dans la région de Rogersville. La région de Rogersville aussi est, re est reconnue par rapport à aussi euh, son patrimoine religieux et culturel, qui est des plus intéressants. Il y a plusieurs festivals dans la région, le festival de, des choux Bruxelles, le festival des bûcherons, il y a les petits foyers l'été qui attirent beaucoup euh, les gens. Ça fait que la région compte également un beau monastère qui a été construit dans le début des années 1900. C'est vraiment un endroit très, très intéressant à visiter. La région de Rogersville aussi compte une chambre de commerce qui existe depuis un peu plus de 70 ans. Une chambre de commerce, c'est un organisme sans but lucratif qui est au service de sa communauté des gens d'affaires. La chambre de commerce travaille présentement sur un, un projet pour essayer d'aider les entreprises qui, euh, où il y a une pénurie de main d'œuvre. Donc, c'est une grande priorité actuellement. Étant donné qu'il y a une pénurie de main d'œuvre, la chambre a, a, pris, euh, a pris la charge de, de commencer à créer peut-être un comité de travail au niveau de l'immigration, ce qui nous permettrait peut-être à aider euh, la région à pouvoir attirer des gens ici, puis également euh, essayer de combler des emplois existants dans la région. Euh, Là-dessus, ce qu'on peut dire, c'est qu'au niveau de la Chambre de commerce, la Chambre de commerce regroupe euh, plus d'une centaine d'entreprises et des organismes communautaires. La Chambre de commerce est un organisme qui est très dynamique dans son milieu. Euh, en, enfin, en terminant, ce qu'on peut dire, pourquoi venir s'installer à Rogersville? Il fait bon vivre à Rogersville. C'est une communauté qui est très accueillante. Il y a la nature, il y a des gens, des gens très intéressants. Euh, également, il y a des emplois très intéressants. Et il y a une chambre de commerce qui est très active dans son milieu. I'm Roberta McIntyre, and I'm currently the regional director for Working NB here in Miramichi. We cover the Northumberland County. So we work typically with individuals, people looking for jobs, job seekers. We look at supporting employers. But we also have our third partner, which is the labor market. In the labor market, we work a lot with uh, community organizations. How can we help the community? And uh, after the Conversation 1.0 here in Miramichi, a little over two years ago, uh, it was one of the uh, meetings that brought a lot of newcomers together in our community. 
And we were very pleased, actually, with the turnout. There was over 120 people that were actually present in the room, but we also got a lot of feedback from the community that in order for our businesses to continue growing and our communities to continue growing, one of our avenues was to look at newcomers and how could we encourage newcomers? Why would they come here to Miramichi? Um, so from there, uh, there was a lot of people that left there inspired, uh, we had a lot of conversation with newcomers that were already here, and they gave us a lot of great ideas, like how could they stay here? Our mayor at the time, our mayor uh, was there, Adam Lorden. He actually spent, you know, he stayed at a full table with a lot of newcomers, and we all got inspired. So what could we do? Uh, and for me, working for government, what was my role? And I knew, and I know in my role, one of the struggles that the employers have in our community is recruiting uh, and maintaining a labor force. It's a challenge not just here in Miramichi, it's a challenge across New Brunswick and, and across Canada. But what can we do here in Miramichi? So we brought this group together and uh, we brought our partners. We brought the, you know, an, one of the important, important partners there was the Miramichi Multicultural Association who also works with the newcomers. Uh, we wanted to engage part, uh, uh, employers so we got the chambers involved. We got other community partners involved. So we started this com this committee, this group that got together, which we are now the Growing Miramichi team. And we have developed, and we're very proud of the work we've done over the last uh, two and a half years or a little bit over two years. Uh, and so our, our action plan, the Community Growth Action Plan, which is, uh, we have it in en français et en anglais, on est ici pour desservir toute la région, la, toutes nos régions francophones de la région de Miramichi autant qu'anglophones. Uh, we want to be inclusive, so we want to include our, our Engl anglophones, francophones, and all our newcomers, the different languages, the beauty of a lot of different people coming to our community. So with a lot of commitment and work, we developed our uh, community growth action plan, and we have 31 actions, but it's divided really in three big sectors, which is come to the region, connect with people in the region, and stay. And they're all divided in those sections because it's we need to attract them to come here. So how are we going to get them to come here? Once they're here, how are they going to connect and to stay? And we know for anybody to move to any new community, you need a job. You want a job that you feel that you contribute because you want to feel like you're contributing to the community. You want to be able to support your family. Um, and, uh, so that's a big part of our plan. So, and it's now at the point where we have a coordinator that's been hired through the multicultural association, every partner, uh, it's been defined which partners could contribute to these actions. And, um, uh, so we're qu quite excited with the work that we've been done and, uh, we're looking to grow the population every year. C'est important aussi avec le plan régional de croissance démographique pour la région de Miramichi. On veut vraiment inclure, comme je disais, toutes nos communautés francophones. Euh, on veut engager la, la, la communauté francophone de Rogersville, la communauté francophone de baie sainte anne la communauté francophone de Niguac, puis aussi toute la grande région de Miramichi. Parce qu'on sait aussi qu'il y a un grand besoin au niveau de ces travailleurs, des, des travailleurs qui pourraient venir dans la région uh, ces employeurs-là qui cherchent des gens qui, qui ont besoin des gens qui leur langue première est la, le français. So, on travaille vraiment avec ces communautés-là aussi pour uh, répondre à leurs besoins au niveau de main dœuvre Je m'appelle Jenny Arlette Mouimondo, je suis la présidente de Miramichi Afro Connection. Notre organisation existe depuis uh, 2018, mais elle a été incorporée en 2019. Et il a été créé pour but premier d'aider les nouveaux arrivants euh, d'origine euh, euh, africaine et caribéenne spécialement, euh, mais pour tous les nouveaux arrivants à s'intégrer à Miramichi. En fait, on s'est rendu compte qu'à Miramichi et probablement dans toutes les plus, plusieurs euh, petites villes, il existe euh, des problèmes de difficultés aussi de, de s'intégrer comme nouveaux arrivants. Donc, si tu ne connais personne, toutes les informations se que de bouche à oreille, car tout le monde euh, connaît tout le monde. Il y, a, il y a donc un besoin immense de construire son réseau euh, pour être connecté. C'est ainsi alors qu'on a fondé le Miramichi Afro Connection pour créer un cadre de rencontre pour ces gens qui arrivent à Miramichi et qui ne connaissent 
personnes afin de pouvoir les aider dans leur euh, intégration avec pour but ultime de les garder ici car on s'est rendu compte que la majorité de ces personnes viennent pour gagner une expérience professionnelle mais qu'ils quittent euh, après pour aller s'installer dans des grandes villes pour euh, rejoindre euh, d'autres membres de leur communauté. En d'autres mots, comme le nom de notre organisation l'indique bien, euh, notre but est, de, est de, de créer cette connexion entre les personnes afro-canadiennes, car chacun reste seul dans son coin, donc on veut que tout le monde connecte entre nos membres qui se connaissent, mais en plus de ça, qu'ils qu connectent avec la communauté locale. C'est pour cette raison que euh, notre organisation est ouverte à tout le monde, quelles que soient le, les origines des, des membres. Donc, on organise plusieurs activités qui sont ouvertes au public, comme euh, euh, la célébration du mois de l'histoire des Noirs. Euh, on organise des, des sorties de groupe. Euh, avant COVID, on faisait des potlucks euh, pour partager nos plats aux saveurs diversifiées. On, on a aussi un club de gym qui est ouvert euh, le long de l'année et, et qui se tient tous les lundis, mercredis et vendredis de 18h à 20h au Carrefour Beau Soleil. Et la participation euh, à toutes ces activités est gratuite. On, a, on organise aussi, on participe aux événements de la communauté comme euh, des dialogues publics, euh, des participations à des séminaires, on, euh, on partage nos témoignages, on, on participe au barbecue du maire. On célèbre chaque mois de février le, le mois de l'histoire des Noirs, comme j'ai dit, et ce, cet événement connaît un grand succès avec une participation d'à peu près 200 personnes. Nos projets futurs est de développer davantage euh, euh, notre organisation pour pouvoir servir euh, toute la communauté comme il faut parce que euh, on peut pas euh, le faire avec euh, des bénévoles qui ont un travail à temps plein. Donc, dans le futur, on, on s'attend à acquérir nos propres bureaux équipés comme il faut. Euh, on, on, on espère recruter des employés qui vont travailler à temps plein pour mettre en œuvre euh, tous les projets que qu'on qu rêve de, de réaliser, mais qu'on peut pas mettre en œuvre justement parce qu'on n'a pas de de personnes pour le faire et on veut aussi s'impliquer dans l'immigration pour euh, agrandir notre communauté et participer à l'accroissement de la population de Miramichi. Nous sommes donc très reconnaissants de, du soutien qu que notre organisation reçoit des différentes euh, organisations qui sont à Miramichi comme le, le Carrefour Beau Soleil, l'association multiculturelle, comme la ville de Miramichi. Ils nous aident beaucoup dans tous nos projets. Ils sont toujours là pour nous soutenir, sans oublier la communauté qui ne cesse de nous impressionner par leur gentillesse et par leur bienveillance. Merci beaucoup pour votre écoute. My name is Jeff McTavish. I'm the Director of Economic Development and Tourism. Uh, I've been in this role for a little over 15 years. And so I've seen... Uh, quite a few changes as it relates to um, this city's uh, policy uh, related to uh, immigration, uh, welcoming of newcomers, and even on the housing side that will support both of those things. So going back, you know, even five years ago, uh, my department had limited responsibilities as it relates to population growth. Um, I was a partner with the Miramichi uh, Regional Multicultural Association, but on a very small level. Uh, our funding agreement that we used to have with them was that we would provide them with some very small amounts to help host their website in order to get our, our logo on there. And from time to time on a project basis, we might be able to help them out, uh, you know, to redo their welcome guide or their visitor guide or something like that, just to help them, you know, uh, offset some of the costs to administer that. But really, from a municipal standpoint, um, we didn't have a lot of jurisdiction as it related to uh, population growth and, you know, um, newcomer attraction. Um, but that has since changed. Um, we've now seen, uh, you know, a, a new local governance act that was uh, implemented or I guess adopted in 2017 by the province of New Brunswick uh, that enables municipalities to really dabble in a couple of areas uh, of economic development that uh, we haven't seen before. And for me, uh, population growth, um, you know, the welcoming of newcomers and housing are all economic development issues here in Miramichi. So our council um, has uh, adopted 
the population growth action plan that was recommended by the community. Uh, it was a community-driven uh, initiative, so we had the Miramichi Multicultural Association leading that file, along with the uh, Department of Post-Secondary Education, Training and Labor, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, our, uh, our Francophone uh, Association here in, in Miramichi through Care for Beausoleil, uh, and a number of other groups. Sorry, I'm missing probably a few, but uh, anyway, there's, those are the key partners that I, that I saw coming together to make this happen. Um, so they've adopted the recommendations contained in that report, and uh, this year, 2021, uh, we're beginning in the implementation of those with a, with a renewed partnership with the, uh, the Miramichi Regional Multicultural Association, uh, which is all exciting. Uh, secondly, uh, the council has also um, adopted the recommendations related to housing, and in that growth plan, there was a lot of issues related to housing. So we're doing a great job attracting the interest of newcomers to Miramichi. What we're doing a horrible job on, and it's no fault of anyone that's out there uh, you know, putting the effort out to try to attract them, is keeping them here because we're, we're lacking housing. So there's a great opportunity for developers, a uh, great opportunity for nonprofits uh, that are looking to um, you know, develop housing to support the growth of our community. And we have a council that uh, has backed that, that, that growth plan uh, with some incentives to try to help offset the cost of that. So, you know, I've seen a lot of changes in the last 15 years, uh, very encouraging. Uh, I'm really looking forward to, you know, in the short term, uh, working with the Miramichi uh, Regional Multicultural Association and our partners to see this growth plan take off. Um, and I'm also looking at, uh, you know, looking forward to the partnerships that we're forming on the housing side to see new developments that it's going to allow more people to stay in this community moving forward. I have never been more proud to be from Miramichi. <laughs> Thank you so much to all of you for participating. Um, we do have time for one quick question. Um, je vais ouvrir la question à vous tous. Donc, uh, pensez-vous qu'il y a d'autres employeurs dans la région qui profiteraient de l'embauche des nouveaux arrivants? So I'll ask the question in English also. Do you think that there are other employers in the region that would benefit from hiring newcomers? Uh, it's open to all of you, so I'll let... Um, um, anyone that wants to take that question. Roberta, veux-tu commencer avec euh, qu'est-ce qui serait le positif en, en embauchant des nouveaux arrivants? I didn't want to cut anybody that wanted to. Definitely, um, what we do, definitely see, Rachel is, there's a few here that's part of my team, so I'm very fortunate to have Rachel as a workforce consultant and Jenny, that just spoke for the uh, Miramichi Afro Connection Group. They're both workforce consultants working on my team. And we see every day, we speak to employers every day in the Miramichi and the greater Miramichi region um, and are really wanting much more people to enter the labor force. Uh, so yes, Rachel, um, there's certainly benefits. Uh, also, there's benefits in educating the uh, the employers in our region on getting the cultural sensitivity. I've noticed a lot of things that was mentioned this evening during the uh, the conversation about, and it's very important for people that move to the region have meaningful employment and that they contribute and that it's, um, so I definitely see some positive and there's a, a big need for a labor force in our region. Euh, maintenant, je poserai la même question à Alain, mais peut-être dans un différent sens, parce qu'Alain, je sais que vous travaillez fort, vous aussi, à, à, pour accueillir des nouveaux arrivants dans la région de Rogersville. Il y a plein, il y a plein de gens qui demandent, est-ce qu'il y a des francophones dans la région de Miramichi? Euh, quand on dit Miramichi, on parle de la grande région de Miramichi, qui inclut Bay saint anne Rogersville et Néguac. Euh, puisque tu es là, peut-être que tu peux nous donner un petit peu d'informations sur votre région et l'importance d'avoir des, des nouveaux arrivants dans la région. Disons que la région de Rogersville, c'est un petit peu le contraire de la région de, de Miramichi. Là, on parle d'à peu près 89 qui est francophone, puis environ 11 qui serait anglophone. Donc, puis on s'aperçoit aussi qu'on a beaucoup d'employeurs qui ont beaucoup de difficultés à recruter des gens quand même qui sont bilingues. Donc, les employeurs sont obligés un peu de recruter euh, des gens qui sont peut-être unilingues anglophones présentement parce qu'il n'y a pas assez de, de main d'œuvre, Il n'y a pas assez de main d'œuvre qui, qui est bilingue à Rogersville. Par exemple, on a les restaurants qui ont beaucoup de misère à recruter, les épiceries, stations, stations d'essence, il y a également d'autres employeurs aussi, au niveau peut-être d'un petit peu de l'industrie, peut-être je, je parle comme exemple de la construction, la rénovation. 
Ça fait que c'est certain que nous, la Chambre de commerce, on veut aider. On veut aider beaucoup ces, ces entreprises-là à pouvoir trouver de la main d'œuvre. Ça fait que c'est pour ça qu'on on vient justement de commencer un comité sur l'immigration, qui est un comité qui est régional, puis qui va regrouper aussi les gens de la région de Miramichi, qui vont faire partie de ce comité-là pour nous donner des idées. Étant donné que la région de Miramichi, vous êtes un petit peu plus avancé que nous autres euh, au niveau de l'accueil, au niveau des, euh, du processus pour attirer des gens, vous avez des structures déjà en place. Fait que je crois que nous autres, Rogersville, on peut peut-être essayer un petit peu d'avoir de l'aide un petit peu de, de ce côté-là. Puis en même temps, euh, on veut partager peut-être des choses conjointement euh, entre les deux régions. Euh, Rogersville, c'est seulement à 30 minutes de Miramichi, c'est tout près. Et puis, euh, un petit peu comme la région de Miramichi, bien, il y a, il y a comme la, la Miramichi, mais la rivière. Ici, il y a le bois. Euh, il y a beaucoup de, de, de choses qui peuvent être faites au niveau de, de plein air. Mais c'est certain, en terminant, au niveau de, au niveau de la main d'œuvre là, il y a un grand, grand besoin euh, pour les prochaines années pour être, être en mesure de garder euh, les entreprises ouvertes ici. Merci beaucoup, Alain. Uh, Jeff, did you want to add something to um, the importance of having newcomers in the area? And, and I know with your video, you actually did talk a lot about it, but if you just want to say, maybe uh, I'll leave you the last, the last word. Sure. Uh, well, thank you very much. Um, I think... Uh, any new employer or any employer would be welcoming to uh, to newcomers for maybe three reasons. One, uh, newcomers bring new ideas. Uh, newcomers bring um, new methods of doing things. And uh, newcomers can, can certainly, um, you know, change the way that, that we, we think about uh, the processes that we're doing. So I think that certainly Newcomers do have uh, a value that they're going to add to uh, to any new business, and it would be kind of, I guess, uh, short-sighted if if newcomer or new businesses did not think to to try to adopt those new ideas and new ways of thinking. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everyone, for being here. It's already that time. Um, I do want to take a moment, though, to say thank you to the uh, N NBMC because uh, we don't see them working in the background, but the uh, the multicultural. Um, Uh, Council of New Brunswick is, is there working really hard and helping us. So thank you for that. Um, unfortunately, yes, it concludes this event. So I want to thank everyone for taking time to join us this evening uh, for the first uh, virtual, I hope it's the last virtual and that we get to see each other face to face again. Um, and for more information on, the, on this initiative, please visit the New Conversation 2.0 website at the newconversationsnb.com. You will also find virtual tour calendar, links to register for the sessions that will follow, and resources including David and Richard's presentation, the Miramichi Regional Report, and more information on our panelists today. We also have one additional video to that, that was provided to us by Dolly Abzuna, uh, the president of the Filipino Miramichi Youth for this initiative. We highly encourage you to view it. All of the new Conversation 2.0 sessions will be recorded and available on the website. I want to thank everybody one more time and I wish you all a great evening. Merci et bonne soirée.